Back in 2013, an online article about plants caused quite a stir in the scientific community, mostly because it posed a radical thought, suggesting that plants might be smarter than we give them credit for. The claims weren't met with enthusiasm back then. Plant biology experts were quick to deny this information. There was no way plants could be considered smart. However, research papers from recent years can educate us on plants' abilities to communicate, learn, solve problems, and even remember stuff. But is this enough for us to call plants intelligent? Let's start with their ability to communicate. There's this intriguing theory that's been floating around, hinting that plants and trees might just be having conversations of their own. And no, they don't have cell phones or internet connections. It looks like some plants chat with each other through a network of mushrooms growing around their roots. Scientists have affectionately termed this mushroom community the Wood Wide Web. It's suggested these networks could be used for anything from shipping nutrients around to warning each other about impending dangers. Like, say, a hungry caterpillar. If you think about it, communication could be a pretty handy skill for plants to have. They can't exactly pick up and run when danger is near or move around to spread their seeds in their surroundings. Because of these challenges, plants got creative. They seem to have teamed up with fungi to exchange messages and resources. Pretty innovative if you ask me. Plants may also communicate using sound. Human ears, for example, can't pick up all kinds of sound waves. In fact, we can only hear sounds with frequencies that swing between 20 and 20,000 hertz. Anything lower than 20 is like a secret code being whispered below our range. We call this subsonic. And then there are sounds that zoom past the upper limit of our hearing. We call these ones ultrasonic. Plants seem to communicate in sound ranges that are not accessible to us, particularly ultrasonic ones. But they're getting the message across to other plants and some animals too. Remarkably, these plant sounds can have surprising effects. It's what makes some herbs develop peculiar friendships. An Australian study showcased this particular companionship between basil and chili plants. The basil helped the chili grow faster than it had done before. One suggestion was that the plants vibrate, and these vibrations create sounds. Even though we can't hear them, these sounds may be fun or even beneficial to the entire plant community. Communication is just one piece of the intelligence puzzle. Could plants also learn from experiences? Well, a group of scientists decided to give this a shot. They set up an experiment with pea plants, using a fan as the stimulus, and light as the reward. For a few days, they would turn on both the fan and the lights simultaneously, creating an association in the pea plant's minds that a gust of wind equals food on the way. After only four days, the plants started leaning towards the fan even without the lights being turned on. It seemed that the plants had learned to respond to the fan's breeze as if it meant food was coming. This was amazing for researchers because it showed that plants can indeed learn from their experiences, a notion that until the experiment seemed impossible. Plants may also have some sort of memory. Scientists have also looked into this fascinating aspect of their life. But how did they figure out that plants can remember? We'll have to travel back to 2014 for that, when a groundbreaking study was performed. It found that plants can indeed create memories. What's even more awesome? They need a single day to begin this process. The star of this botanical experiment is the shy mimosa pudica, known as the sensitive plant. Sure, it doesn't have a nervous system like us, but it began showing signs of learning in just 24 hours. This peculiar plant has a unique defense mechanism, the ability to fold its leaves inward when threatened. It's a disguise, basically. Once its leaves are folded, it doesn't look as appetizing for any hungry critters nearby. The scientists behind the study used a clever setup. Think of it as a miniature elevator to test our leafy friend's memory. They simulated a fall by dropping the mimosa plant 60 times at 5 second intervals. This movement made the plant fold into its signature form. But here's the curious part. 
after those 60 drops, the plant stopped folding its leaves. It's as if the plant realized that the fall wasn't going to hurt. This experiment was carried out with over 50 different mimosa plants, and most of them showed the same learned behavior and stopped curling their leaves. What this shows is that the plant was able to remember the fall and understand that it didn't need to react defensively to it. The plant learned that the drops were harmless, and it stopped wasting unnecessary energy to protect itself. If plants are really intelligent, do we need to start worrying about them? Evolution sometimes works in mysterious ways. So you can't help but wonder if flowers or herbs might one day take over the world. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, though. For plants to decide that they want to rule the world, they'd first need to develop some sort of consciousness. If we look at this potential ability as being similar to that of humans, plants will need to have some skills. For starters, they should have their own language. Then, they would need a sort of brain that can store very complex information. Lastly, they've got to have a way to interact with and, more importantly, change their surroundings. Now, you're probably wondering, how would this happen? Plants just can't get up and walk around, can they? Well, it's easy to think that because plants are stuck in one place, they're not really that clever. But that may not be true. Recent research shows that even though they can't slide away from danger or stroll down the street to grab some tasty fertilizer, plants are still pretty smart. Scientists have pointed out that plants are, in fact, really good at understanding their surroundings, even better than us or animals. Believe it or not, every tiny root tip of a plant can monitor around 15 different environmental factors all at the same time. While humans have a centralized brain, a plant's brain is kind of all over the place, but mostly in its roots. And this strategy works wonders for them. After all, if a nibbling deer or a lawnmower came along and munched off their head, there goes their brain. But plants are smarter. They spread their intelligence through their roots so that they can keep going even if 90% of their root tips get chopped off. Plants are also not as immobile as we like to believe. They move all the time just not the way we do. You'll see plants following sunlight, flowering, and even taking little naps. There's more to plant intelligence than just activity and movement. They're also good at math, can perceive us, and just like those cute animals that help each other, plants also show kindness to their kin. They can identify themselves and interact with animals and other plants by releasing attractive scents and a mix of different chemicals. In 2013, a group of scientists found that tiny mustard weeds can do math to avoid going hungry during the night. These clever plants make starch using sunlight and then, at night, they calculate how much starch they have left. Then they divide their starch reserve by the number of hours left until dawn, so they have enough to last till sunrise. Their math skills are so good, they manage to use about 95% of their resources just in time for their morning photosynthesis session. Also, according to researchers from Tel Aviv University, plants can see us using special photoreceptors. They know when we're near and can even tell if we're wearing a red or blue shirt. Does all this information mean we need to see plants as a threat? Probably not. But it does show us that we still have a lot to learn about our local flora. Also, it may help us better understand our planet.